Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about finding limits of piecewise functions. So for this first example, I have the function f of x is three separate pieces. To start off, I'm actually going to graph this on the set of axes provided. I'm going to start by creating a table of values based on the restricted domains that they gave me. Now when I set up my table, you can see that I split my table into three different pieces. I repeated x equals 2 twice to account for each of these pieces. And I repeated x equals 4 to account for each of these pieces. So since this is 2 and numbers less than 2, I'll be graphing x plus 1 for these values. From 2 to 4, I'll be using the graph x squared minus 4. And for numbers greater than 4, I have the graph the square root of x plus 5. I'm going to put little dots at each of these values where I'm changing so that I know if I'm going to be an open circle or a closed circle. So for x plus 1, I have x is less than 2. I'm noticing here a typo, so I'm actually going to make this x is less than or equal to 2 just so that this is actually a function. So since this is less than or equal to 2, this is going to be a colored in circle at 2. But since in my next piece I have 2 is less than x, I'm going to have an open circle at 2. And for less than 4, I'm going to have an open circle at 4. For my last piece, x is greater than or equal to 4, this will be a colored in circle at 4. Now what I'm going to do is find each of my y values to fill out the rest of this table. Since I'm plugging 1 in for x here, I get 2. And I plug 2 in for x, I get 3. For my next section, when I plug in 2, I get 0, 5, and 14. And in this third section, I'm plugging into the square root of x plus 5, and I get 3 and the square root of 10. I'm now going to graph these points. So you can see that I have a line for x is less than 2, a small piece of a parabola from 2 to 4, and then that square root function for values greater than 4. Now that I have my graph, I'm going to start answering my questions down here. So first I have the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x. So if I'm approaching x equals 1 from the right hand side, I'm just right along this line. So I can plug 1 in for the line. So 1 plus 1 is... Two. For x plus 1 from the left, since I'm still right on the line, this answer is 2. And the limit as x approaches 1 is also 2. Last but not least, f of 1, so the value of the function at 1. Again, that's just a point that's lying on this line x plus 1, so the answer is also 2. Part E, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. So if I'm approaching x plus 2 from the right, I'm looking at numbers greater than 2 and coming this way. So as I'm approaching x plus 2 from the right, I'm getting closer and closer to 0. So my answer there is 0. For the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, I'm coming from values of x equals 2 less than 2. So as I approach 2 from the left, I'm approaching this 3 value. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left is 3. Since the limit from the right is not equal to the limit from the left, the limit as x approaches 2 does not exist. That's a DNA. For f of 2, the value of the function at x equals 2, I go by the colored in dot. So not the 0, I go by this value up here, 3. I, the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. I can see that 3 is just in this interval of 2 to 4. So it's going to be a point that lies on x squared minus 2. When I plugged in 3, I got 5. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the right is 5. The limit as x approaches 3 from the left is 5. The limit as x approaches 3 is 5, and f of 3 is 5. So these ones are nice and easy. When the x value you're plugging in lies in the restricted domain, and it's not one of these pieces that's changing from one piece of the function to the other, it's easier just plugging that value into whatever the function is. It gets a little bit trickier if you're at either x equals 2 or x equals 4, where your function is changing from the line to the parabola or the parabola to the square root. So let's look at m through p. For this one, I'm looking at the limit as x approaches 4 in different variations and then the value of the function at x equals 4. So if I'm looking for the limit as x approaching 4 from the right, I'm looking for numbers greater than 4 and coming from this direction. So the limit as x approaches 4 from the right is 3. The limit as x approaches 4 from the left, I'm coming from values less than 4. So if I'm traveling along my function, getting to x is 4, on the left side, I end up at 14. Since the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right, the limit as x approaches 4 does not exist. 
And lastly, f of four, so the value of the function at x equals four is where I have the colored in dot. That was my radical function, so that was three. It's not necessary to always graph the piecewise function. Once you know what's going on, it's actually easier to just plug into the piece of the piecewise function as you go, as opposed to graphing it. So let's look at a couple of examples where I just plug in and I don't even bother with that graph. Number two, find the following limits for the piecewise function. For a, I'm looking at the limit as x approaches 3 from the left. Since I'm looking at the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, that's numbers smaller than 3. So I'm looking for the inequality that has less than 3. So that's that first piece, the x plus 2 over 2. So I'm going to plug in 3 into the x plus 2 over 2, and I get 5 halves for part A. For part B, the limit as x approaches 3 from the right, I'm approaching from numbers greater than 3. So that's going to be the 12 minus 2x over 3 part of my piecewise function. So I'm going to plug 3 in for x. So I end up with 12 minus 2 times 3 is 6 over 3. So this is going to be 6 in the numerator divided by 3 is 2. For part C, the limit as x approaches 3, since 5 halves is not equal to 2, the limit from the left is not equal to the limit from the right, this limit does not exist. If I had a part D that also asked for f of 3, the value of the function at x equals 3, I'd be looking at this less than or equal to piece, right? At greater than, I would have an open circle, and then at less than or equal to, I would have the closed circle. So this has the function's value, which actually came from part A. So f of 3 is 5 halves. Number 3, find the following limits for the piecewise function. I have first the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. So I'm looking at values of x less than 1. So that's the x cubed plus 1. I plug 1 in for x and I get 2. For the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, I'm looking for values of x greater than 1. So that's the x plus 1 piece of this function. So if I plug 1 in for x, I get 2. Since the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right, that means the limit as x approaches 1 is 2. That's it for finding limits of piecewise functions. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you are not one of my students and would like a copy of this worksheet, feel free to send an email. I will leave that email address in the description below. Hope you have a great day.